Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on the TRM Knives Neutron 2. This variation specifically is the new, I believe they were calling it lizard skin, diamond tie, whatever you want to call it. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's highly sought after and I'm just going to tell you guys right now, from an enthusiast standpoint all day for what they're asking for yes it is a good chunk of money but it is gorgeous the i have i only have two real downsides to this two little nitpicks um one of them mm, eh. another one it's uh i'm sure a lot of people would agree when you're spending this kind of money so I actually have their website opened up on my laptop over here off to the side. Of course, this is out of stock because they never have anything in stock. There's a reason why. They're pretty freaking great. Made in the US of A. Um, extremely high tolerances. Master class machinist, as you can see here. Um, and they make, they don't make knives. They make laser beams, right? So that's, that's what they do. They specialize in making professional cutting tools essentially um, so there's a lot of practicality of about the knives overall and you don't even have to get like a super crazy one they have smooth g10 ones to be used as beater knives they're still on the higher end side but remember you are getting u.s manufacturing and at incredible incredible tolerances and fin fit and finish quality this is going to be my third trm knife um, I've tried the Holy Nerd and Micro Mill Tie. I recently had the, I suppose, the large version of this, the big brother of this, the Atom in the, this exact diamond tie. I sold that to get this essentially because that one was a full size, just, it wasn't a giant knife, but it was definitely a full size knife and I couldn't carry it to work. I enjoyed it so much that I justified selling it to be able to buy this, which is a little bit cheaper, not by much, but a little bit cheaper, just so I can be able to take it to work and actually use it all the time. This is going to be a very easy daily, a uh, flashy daily for sure. But uh, let's get into pricing. This guy is $362.50. Ouch. That is a good chunk of money, but again, again, made in the US, super high tolerances, wonderful materials, well heat treated and executed blade material. They are using CPM 20 CV. It is a little stamp right there. Um, not necessary, but it's really, really tiny, skinny font. Not really, you know, flashy, shouty, something like Microtech. Uh, they do have stamped into the actual blade itself the trm little logo right there i like it it's cool so it doesn't actually say like trm like across the blade or anything crazy looking like that there's nothing on the clip and that's another thing i want to talk about do you see this thing this is like putting ginormous rims on what is essentially a lamborghini in the knife world, this this is a, a very fancy knife. Well, you know, maybe not a Lamborghini, but again, this is like putting completely uh, impractical uh, rims on on definitely a sports car of a knife for sure. So that's just that was one of my little my little nitpicks there. That is a eesh, that pocket clip right there. So that's pretty much about it. Let's get the weight on this, and then we'll do some size comparisons. Again, this is going to be a medium size knife definitely a little bit more compact i wouldn't say fifth pocket but uh you know it's a regular pocket knife right 3.3 ounces not too bad so all the hardware on here it is steel but you do have a bent tie clip and the aligners are actually titanium too there is zero internal milling for weight relief there definitely could have been, there probably should have been, just cause, just to flex, it would have been cool. Um, and not actually, actually flex, like you're, you're not gonna actually be able to, just, that's just not gonna happen, right? 
you do have these little standoffs, no backspacer, not a big deal. Uh, would have been cool if there was, but I could see how with the way things are constructed, that would have uh, been a very problematic little piece. So with how this thing is constructed, I'm happy with it for the most part. All right, let's get into some size comparisons here. Let's do some big ones first. So here we have the Wii Knives Praxis, a behemoth in comparison. The Spyderco PM2, also a giant object in comparison. Some stuff a little bit more comparable. A beautiful Spyderco Native 5. Demco. AD 20.5. There you go. Definitely more of the size of that native five, which is why I enjoy it so much. And last two here the F5.5 and a bug out. So definitely shorter than the bug out, that's for sure. Not a whole lot shorter, but it is. So there's that. All right, we did. Wait, size comparison. Let's talk about the build overall. In comparison to the Atom, that one broke in beautifully and became essentially drop shutty or drop to the nail. This is running on washers. So you're not gonna have bearing action. It's very different. And if you're used to bearings and flippy dippy this, that, and the other, this is this may not be for you or if you do want to go ahead and try something out like this um it's going to be very different and it really isn't for everybody but there is something definitely uh enjoyable about it it's still extremely smooth for sure um if anything this is probably still breaking in i haven't really been using it a lot a lot i haven't even sharpened it yet this is still the factory edge and this is actually still very beautiful um, uh, still very sharp, honestly. Um, what else? What else? So access to the liner, there's a little bit of texturing. It's not sharp at all. It's actually quite comfortable to disengage. And this could actually be a very easy fidget knife. In comparison to the larger one, um, the larger one had a much stronger detent. This is significantly lighter but it doesn't feel cheap. It's not lighter as in it's cheaper lighter. The retention of the detail is still excellent. It is very, very stout for sure. Um, so you can slow roll it, definitely, if you just, you know, use the whole weight of your thumb and you just, you know, get it out there like that, right? But um, in comparison to the full size one, I can re comfortably reverse flick this because the detent is lighter in a way to the large one. So I still prefer with the thumb, it's just snappier. It sounds nicer, it looks cooler, um, and my hand just kind of lands in a good position to actually you know, use the damn thing, right? So there's that. Um, all the hardware on here, uh, at least the body hardware, there's T6, would have preferred T8, but I could see how that may take away from uh, the minimal aesthetic here. Um, the only thing really shouty about this thing overall is really just going to be the scales. These can be purchased separately and they're actually extremely easy to remove. The only thing holding these scales on, at least on the right side of the knife or the front side of the knife, um, is this for right-handed carry. So I suppose maybe the left side, right side. I don't know. How do, how would you, how would you call that? If it sits in your pocket like this, because you're a right-handed individual, this would be the left side, that's the right side. But when you look at it like this, that's the right side, that's the left side. So I don't know, you guys you guys know what I'm trying to say here, right? So um, this is of course a right-handed person's knife. I don't think they do really any stuff for lefties. If they do, it's rare, which is honestly really unfortunate because everybody should be able to enjoy these wonderful knives for sure. Uh, I mean, hey, they can't even keep up with production for right-handed people. <laughs> Good luck, lefties. And that, that's really unfortunate, honestly. Or you can just carry it right-handed, which still, you know, 
uh, when you pay this kind of money, you want to be able to have it a little bit tailored to you, right? In a way. Um, but, you know, there's there's that. These two screws are holding it in, not the pivot at all. Um, and it just pops off. Here you remove this horrendous monster truck wheel worth of uh, clip. And then you do that one. There's one underneath. And you can pop that off. You can put carbon fiber scales, micarta ultim whatever i mean actually you know what i don't even know if there is ultim there probably is but there are a multitude of different colors and materials available um and also i believe other people in the aftermarket make stuff for them too possibly um if i can find them i will link them down in the description because i believe that uh, this is definitely a knife that a lot of people can get around because it is so plain and simple and honestly really boring until you slap on something as beautiful as these scales. I mean, if there was somebody out there, maybe like Metenboss or who else? <sighs> Off the top of my head, I can't remember too many people um, that specialize in just like micro milled customization stuff. There's death grip scales, but they do like just bench made stuff, which is really unfortunate. Um, but if other manufacturers in the aftermarket made custom scales, just imagine for a second, just imagine with me, zirconium scales. Oh, that would be so sweet. This would be a little pocket brick and I would love every little bit of it. It'd be pretty freaking awesome. Uh, zirconium is cool, it's beautiful, but I know it is quite challenging to machine. That's why you know, the price is what it is with that material. Um, that's honestly really it, the action. Excellent, super smooth, up and down, side to side, super solid. Uh, have I had any lock stick? Yeah, I actually have had some lock stick. Um, the pivot is very sensitive. Do not over tighten it, do not have it loose. Because uh, at least in my experience, I was getting the crunchiest disengagement and some disgusting stick. Now, super smooth, super light. It. I don't wanna say delicate, but um it's just it's effortless you don't really have to do much to to disengage that the travel on the liner it's extremely minimal like look at that it doesn't really have to just boop that's it just over and that's it now it's not to say that if you go and uh, you give this to a monkey on cocaine and they smack the back of this thing to say that this is going to come undone because it won't it won't fail the lockup on this is pretty darn solid and I do trust and have a good bit of confidence getting up there and doing some harder slicing tasks. Um, the way that this is machined, how tight it is uh, back here, you can see the uh, titanium liner sticking up in the back piece here and then just holding in the stop pin right there in the back. There is so little surface area to that stop pin and while that stop pin does look quite thin and delicate, there is so it is so short and so tight in there that it is honestly a whole lot stronger than this knife could ever really you know need honestly so that's pretty cool i have a whole lot of confidence in this brand and buying and spending this kind of money because of what i've experienced in the past but one thing i have noticed overall is that when they do their machine on their titanium and i've only bought the titanium knives they may not do it with the micarta or the g10 ones but i noticed that um, they leave the hole for the actual hardware pieces, they leave it a little crisp, just a little crisp. And I know there's a more professional term for that. I don't wanna call it jagged because it's not, it's a very clean cut, but it is left um, just a little, a little crisp there and you can feel it if, uh, I don't know, I guess the, the best way to see it really visually is if you had like a really thin napkin or paper towel and you just kind of go over that, it will snag some of the fibers. And uh, whether you have super durable man fingers or you know delicate office worker hands, um, I'm somewhere in between, I don't honestly know at this point. Um, I don't wear gloves to work, uh, but I also get a crap ton of cuts and my hands look like shit all the time but um i do feel it i do notice it some of the holes here on the pivot um you can see it it's just 
it's a little sharp it's just just a little sharp it's nothing crazy right it's not that bad it's not the end of the world but i noticed it on the other two models uh, the Holy Nerd and the Atom, it's the same thing. For a company that prides itself in being masters of titanium machining and all this kind of nonsense, um, I would definitely say that they really should be taking, you know, a little chamfer to those edges. And if they do, uh, maybe spend a little bit more time on that because when somebody is spending this kind of money, this is uh, definitely, definitely past the point of enthusiast entry level money for sure. Um, people pay for that kind of stuff. People notice that kind of stuff. Uh, at least I did, right? Uh, from using it, from looking at it, from fondling it like a freak. Um, that's something that I've definitely noticed. So really, that's that's the only complaint. And I can learn to live with that. Again, it's not... It is not the end of the world. I still justify the purchase. I still enjoy this thing. Hell, I could even go in with a little uh, polishing Dremel that's like cone shaped. Zzz, zzz, it just, it, it's that simple. It's that easy. But I shouldn't have to do that spending this kind of money. So uh, that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, you can get little O rings that they sell for um, the thumb studs. They are smooth at the top, but. At least for me, um, I got used to them. They're pretty comfy. They don't bite into my uh, my fingers at all. They're not uncomfortable by any means. Uh, I do slip off the uh, other one when I go to reverse flick, and I gotta use my nail um, to you know break past that detent. But when I do, I mean, it's ready to freaking go. So that's pretty awesome. The blade finish on here, zero complaints. It is beautiful. It is a beautifully consistent stone wash i love it it is meant to be used and meant to be appreciated for a long period of time also the finish on the scales itself it is a very hazy hazy uh like polished stone wash kind of look um and is very complimentary to the whole thing uh this can definitely be a project knife if somebody wanted to go do um, an acid wash or do torching on the steel components and anodizing of of uh what's called the clip and the scales and yeah you know, i may do that i'm not too sure um it just depends on how long this is actually going to stay in the collection as far as i know i love this thing and it's pretty sweet and it's here to stay for now until i don't know something happens uh, i don't know what that could be but you know that would you know force me to sell this thing so i have a freaking kid and i need to get like a month's worth of diapers i'll sell this thing or something like that i don't know but with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little review. I know it was all over the place, per usual. It's kind of what you guys are here for, possibly. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know why you watch me at this point. But I have fun doing this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. I love sharing my experience. I love sharing this kind of stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people that are new to the hobby, they're like, you spent how much on a knife? Are you stupid? And it's like, no, I'm, I'm not. Well, yeah, I am, but not in the ways that you think. You know, there there is a whole lot to appreciate about something like this. This is, this is absolutely beautiful and justified. But you know what? To enjoy the model itself, you don't have to get this fancy one. You can get one of the G10 ones or one of the ones from Carta or Carbon Fiber. And I'm sure those are built just as well as this. Um, so... With that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you are currently subscribed, I appreciate all you guys' support and patience, of course. If you are not subscribed, consider subscribing because I have plenty more videos of content coming your guys' way. And with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day.